Very good. So I think nobody wants to follow that up, I'm pretty sure, back there. How many of you have been to the great state of Alaska? Anybody been on? Well, Don Sager is taking the stage next to, uh, to recite a poem and hear the legend and lore of one known as Sam McGee. Please give a big round of applause for Don Sager. Cremation of Sam McGee, written by Robert W. Service. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have, seen, have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake LaBarge, I cremated Sam McGee. Now, Sam McGee was from Tennessee, where the cotton blooms and blows. Why he left his home in the south to roam around the pole, God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell. Though he'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold. Through the parka's fold, it stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes we'd close, then the lashes froze till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whisper, whimper, was Sam McGee. And that very night, as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed, and the stars overhead were dancing heel and toe, he turned to me, and Cap, says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking, you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no. Then he says with a sort of moan, it's the cursed cold and it's got right hold till I'm chilled clean through to the bone. Yet, taint being dead, it's my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that foul or fair, You'll cremate my last remains. A pal's last need is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And we started on at the break of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh, and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and I hurried, horror-driven, with a corpse half hid that I couldn't get rid because of a promise given. It was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and brains, but you promise true, and it's up to you to cremate those last remains. Now, a promise made is a debt unpaid, and the trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, though my lips were dumb, in my heart, how I cursed that load. In the long, long night, by the lone firelight, while the huskies, round in a ring, howled out their woes to the homeless snows. Oh, God, how I loathed the thing. And every day, that quiet clay seemed to heavy and heavier grow. And on I went, though the dogs were spent and the grub was getting low. The trail was bad and I felt half mad, but I swore I would not give in. 
And I'd often sing to the hateful thing, and it hearkened with a grin, till I came to the marge of Lake Labarge, and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, but I saw in a trice it was called this Alice May. And I looked at it, and I thought a bit, and I looked at my cho frozen chum. Then, here, said I, with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor, and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that was lying around, and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames just soared, and the furnace roared, such a blaze you seldom see. And I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike, for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. And the heavens scowled, and huskies howled, and the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled down my cheeks, and I don't know why. And the greasy smoke in an inky, inky cloak went shrinking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear, but the stars came out and they danced about ere again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but bravely said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked, and it's time I looked. Then the door I opened wide, and there sat Sam, looking cool and calm in the heart of the furnace roar, and he wore a smile you could see a mile, and he said, please close that door. It's fine in here, but I greatly fear you'll let in this cold and storm. Since I left Plumtree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. <clears throat> There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge, I cremated Sam McGee. So the moral of the story, don't get near Don in a sled or his kitchen oven. That's two good things. Great job, Don. Now, the next young man coming to the stage right now, he is also a repeat offender in this room, and he is highly skilled, talented, and gifted. Sometimes I call him Mervin. Sometimes I call him Melvin. I might even call him Mulligan, but most of you know 